a general analytical framework for the analysis of currencies and other commodities by Warren Mosler and Matthew Forstadter. The Horizontal Component The horizontal component concerns the broad category of credit. In contrast with the vertical component, gross expansion of the horizontal component is endogenous, in nets to zero. The majority of circuit analysis begins and ends with the horizontal component. Even when the state is introduced, it too is assumed to behave horizontally. State taxing and borrowing are treated identically to private sector selling and borrowing. Though this treatment of the state may not be technically incorrect, the use of the vertical component adds a characterization of state, acti of state activity previously ignored. Any commodity has at least a vertical component. Horizontal activity represents leveraged activity of a vertical component. For analytical purposes, a unit of a currency is a commodity with no cost of production or substitution. No substitution. For analytical purposes, a unit of a currency is a commodity with no cost of production, no substitution, no inherent storage costs or transaction costs and no product differentiation. Corn can be used to specifically demonstrate how a currency lends itself to the same analysis as commodities. With corn, the farmer can be considered at the top of the vertical component and consumption eating at the bottom. The private sector remains in the middle and transfers non-corn, generally units of a currency, up to the farmer who sends down the corn in exchange. If the private sector purchases more corn than it immediately consumes, the difference is warehoused, accu accumulated. If we were to use the same language with corn as we do with currency, we would say that when the farmer exchanges more corn to the private sector than the private sector consumes, the farmer is engaging in the deficit spending of corn. The corn futures market is a leveraging of physical corn. There is a short position for every long position. Likewise, the creation of bank loans and their corresponding deposits is a leveraging of the currency. And every short position or borrower has a long position or depositor on the other side of the ledger. The futures market also happens to be a market that leverages the currency, as corn, for example, is exchanged for units of the currency. Thus, the horizontal component for currency analysis can be indicated by introducing credit into the picture. This model is consistent with the post-Keynesian notion that reserve imbalances can be reconciled only by the central bank. In this model, the horizontal activity always nets to zero. Reserves are clearing balances that can only come from vertical activity. Furthermore, in the U.S. system, the Fed controls the mix in the warehouse and can, for example, by purchasing securities on the open market, decrease securities held by the private sector and increase reserves of the private sector, clearing balances. Because of deposit insurance, in effect, the Fed guarantees that interbank checks will clear when presented at the Fed. This means that if the banking system doesn't have sufficient reserves as required by the Fed, at least one bank will be showing an overdraft at its account at the Fed. Such an overdraft is, of course, a loan from the Fed and an example of vertical activity. So, in the U.S. system, required reserves come from the Fed in one form or another on demand, and the Fed sets the terms of exchange interest rate and collateral for the transaction.